Hello. Am I audible? Yes. Can you hear me? Can you see my screen? I think I'm having some internet issues. Let me share my screen again. I don't know why keep, this keeps on happening. Ah, I think finally we can start the class. Sound familiar? Yes. So I see some people who are confused, some people understand it, some people are smiling because these phrases have become a part of our lives, be it professional, be it in class or in our personal lives. And this is so because of something that needs no introduction or explanation. Yes, indeed, I'm talking about the pandemic, right? And as we graduate from this pandemic, uh, this has become the new normal. Welcome to a world where we need to dare, we need to dream and dream big. We need to disrupt. Now, either we can disrupt with technology and we can do it by choice, or we can be disrupted and have to accept the consequences. We can be disrupted and washed away and be okay with it. So, my preference is always the first one, so we are in control, we disrupt, and we do it again and again. A beautiful cycle that moves the needle. And by doing so, it can actually show how we can create the next generation of Bangladeshi global citizens and the workforce of tomorrow. A workplace that is heavily industrialized, that is extremely automated and influenced by AI. Where emotional intelligence of us, our students, our next generation, trumps higher than IQ. Catalyzing through technology and innovation, let us embark on a journey to see how we can develop the digital native, progressive, and aspirational Bangladesh. Asalaamu Alaikum everyone, I'm Rizwan. I'm trying to be human, full of errors, emotions, and everything that does not make me an AI yet. I'm not a robot. However, when I go to these websites and they ask me to check and find out which ones are the traffic lights and the buses and the cycles, I suffer from a mighty existential crisis and self-doubt. People who got the reference and joke, you know, it's near impossible. Those things are borderline impossible. So let me start with actually defining some of these things that we're going to talk about today. Yeah? So embrace. Embrace is a word. It evokes an emotion of awe, oh, A-W-E. So affectionately, willingly, uh, willing, willingly, sorry, and enthusiastically. So let us embrace the word embrace as we open ourselves up to disruption. So what is disruption? Yeah. So disruption to me is a positive delta. It's an incremental uh, change. Yeah. Technological innovation that gives us a positive uh, progress from where we are today to tomorrow, from yesterday to today. Disruption is inevitable. It's the opposite of status quo. Disruption is incoming. So whether we like it or not, IR 4.0 or 5.0 even is here and will be here soon and we need to embrace it. We need to embrace it to move the needle. What is moving the needle? I'm just going to come to that. But disruption, let us agree that it is a technological innovation or technological progress that drives us forward. But disruption has a different side to it as well. Disruption can be devastating. Disruption 
cannot be, may not be in your control. Disruption is the pandemic. It is an incident four years ago in my life that led to me being on stage today. Disruption can be technological, but it can also be financial, social, regulatory. So let's hold on to that thought and move on to moving the needle. So what is moving the needle? What is the needle? Who's moving it? How much? Why? Where? When? How? Yeah. So a popular definition of moving the needle is, again, very related to disruption where we progress forward, where individually we accept something and that by default, by the sheer number of power, power of number, it replicates to collect. Moving the needle is thriving for a better tomorrow. Moving the needle is basically establishing ourselves and creating a pathway for the future where we want to actually be. So with that, let me actually start with an origin story. So, <clears throat> the absolute definition, a young boy from the absolute definition of middle income family from northern rural Bangladesh dares to pursue higher education. To do that, his mother needed to sell some gold. So, upon graduation, and getting a job, he buys back some gold, he buys some other jewelry as a form of gratitude. Sounds like a script from a movie or a drama, right? It is nothing but the truth. And if you are wondering why this is relevant, this story has everything got to do with embracing disruption to moving the needle. By the grace of God and Almighty, a lot of sacrifices from parents and friends and support from the entire society. Uh, his next generation self-funds his way to an Ivy League education in America, has a globe-trotting career, and finally lands uh, in his home, home country for the pursuit of happiness and searching the meaning of life. Yes, indeed that individual is myself, I'm talking about me. So, having access to early, uh, having early access to uh, technology, this is a photo. I don't know why this exists, but I'm so thankful that it does. It's not photoshopped. I don't know why my parents actually thought that, you know, I need to have uh, this big a photo in between all of my computers and gadgets. And Gen Z's, this thing over here is called a telephone. <laughs> you may not be familiar with the concept. But thanks to my mother, I had early access to technology in my life, which propelled my understanding and my vision of what my own educational journey would be. How can I actually guide and create my own career path and choices? And how I can disrupt as I'm uh, venturing into the world of education myself and trying to be an educator, hopefully a good one. So emerging technologies in education. Yeah. Emerging technologies in education is not a new thing. Fast forward from this photo, and 30 years later, three decades later, voila, we are in the midst of emerging technologies like Web 3.0, blockchain, uh, metaverse, machine learning, AI, and generative AI. We are discussing what is the effect of the likes of Chat GPT and BARD and the others in our educational system. While the students are really happy, yeah, 
there's a lot of question and debate. Will it destroy our schools and universities? Will our students be actually be able to write essays and structure their thoughts and arguments because a machine is doing it for them and it's doing it very well? Yeah. Is it threatening our legacy education system and pedagogical approaches? In addition to that, we are perhaps also amidst discussing and debating hundreds of other questions from teachers, parents, students, society at large. However, my question is, is it not the right time? Is the time not right to actually transform and disrupt how we think about education, how we receive and provide education? So while the likes of ChatGPT, the likes of BARD, they are creating a lot of access to students. Our, I have spent about four years in this country as a corporate professional and as, as well as two years as an adjunct faculty. And I see that our students are resilient, they are competent, they are some of the best, but unfortunately, they lack access to technology sometimes, they lack access to information, they lack uh, they do not enjoy the opportunities that students in other geographies may enjoy. Due to our socio-economic and geopolitical constraints, with using technology like generative AI, the emerging tech, now they have a whole new frontier open to them. They can ask questions without inhibitions or fear of consequences. They can write prompts and achieve and do things that was previously impossible. And they can disrupt their lives for the better by creating income sources that were previously perhaps inaccessible to them. So students challenge the status quo. Take the technology and see what can you do with it. Educators, teachers, so a part of this puzzle, this entire piece, are our teachers. What is the greatest ed tech solution that we can build? It is our educators. The teachers that we have, our educators are the best educational technology we can build. They are the ones that can mold and shape the future of our students. So teachers, I dare you to dream and dream big. I dare you to challenge your students to use technology and see what disruption they come up with. I dare you to dream and work together with the rival institutions to create new research and knowledge. I dare you to disrupt and work with the industry in solving real world problems that will create opportunities for our students and expose them to the opportunities that they previously have not had. So don't let the calculators, the mobile phones, the internet in the computer lab, the fabrication machine or the quantum computer be under lock and key and as a holy item of decor. Yeah? I dare you to give students access to use them, break them, <coughs> fix them, and see what disruption they can come back with. And when they're successful, dare to do them all over again. So industry. Now, to my fellow industry colleagues and professionals, we are the connection between all of these three. More often than not, 
we have the, the corporates, the industry has the means and resources. We are the early adopters. We use this to solve our daily business problems and use cases. I dare you to open up and bring in education uh, and academia into your space. I dream to disrupt. I dare you to dream and disrupt by creating an in industry and academia bridge where we actually propel ourselves to be the Bangladesh of tomorrow. So Bangladesh was not and will not be built in a day. In our pursuit of embracing disruption to move the needle, it's about incremental progress. It doesn't have to be a revolution. It can be an evolution, a series of evolutions, as well as slow. But the needle must move. And we have to actually move it. So as we graduate from an LDC and move to the promised land, every student, every teacher, every industry professional, I invite you to dare, to dare and dream big, to disrupt, to accept whatever disruption is and make it the new normal and keep doing it again and again. And if you find yourself alone in that pursuit, just know that with that, uh, I would like to thank you. A disclaimer, with a lot of weak moments, no generative AI was used to write the material for this talk. However, a confession, I did use some to correct my grammar. Thank you very, very much.